What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome to the first battle, the first week of the CFL. I am very excited, I'm very nervous for this match, and I hope you guys are ready to cheer me on, or, or I guess cheer against me, I don't know who you're here to support, but I am very excited and very nervous. Uh, if you didn't see the team builder, please do check it out. There's a lot of thought that went into picking these particular members of the team, why they have the moves they have, the EV sets they do, the items they do, and how I anticipate using them potentially in this match. So please do check that out. Uh, this first week we're going to be going against Jerry, coach of the Californian Cubones. He's got a very threatening team, uh, and it's very offensive, and so I had to play a little bit more on the bulky side this time around. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, at this point, we're just waiting for a challenge from him. So I guess we'll wait patiently. All right, the, the challenge has arrived. You can see the team that we have here, week one versus Jerry. If I had to guess, he is going to bring Cinderace, Dragapult, Rotom Heat, Nidoking, Star Raptor, and Klefki. All six of his top tier picks, his offensive Pokemon. But, um, oh man, the nerves are real. We're listening to some good old Mirror B music from Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I think it's uh, a great theme, and I think it's something Jerry would appreciate too. But, all right, here we go. Let's see what he brought. Your team was rejected. Oh, it's because my... I can't actually name Umbreon Eevee. Oh, Lizzie's gonna be so upset. Lizzie has a cat named Eevee, and that's why she wanted Umbreon to be named Eevee. Okay, so almost no Cinderace. Oh, I should um stop the timer. That's my bad. Okay, so pretty much everything I expected. Um, just no. No Cinderace, which I'm really surprised by, honestly. And we've got Lycanroc Knight, which poses quite the threat. I was actually just looking that up beforehand. You can see it here. It's got an ability No Guard, uh, which is really helpful, so it doesn't miss moves. And it can set up with Swords Dance, go for Stone Edge, Close Combat, Psychic Fangs, Stomping Tantrum. So it has really good coverage against my team. However, it also has really good coverage against his team. So I'd imagine uh, he's going to have to be careful about setting up or not. But either way, I think our lead, either way, is going to be Ditto. So he leads with Rotom Heat. Awesome. So we're already going to learn what this is. And I'm actually Pain Split, Defog, Volt Switch, and Thunderbolt. So it's not even set up, and it's not Trick. That is a huge difference um, but in, in strategy I can go for now. Okay, so I'm going to write this down real quick. He's got Volt Switch, Team Bolt. Pain Split and Defog, and that's probably to help beat Blissey. He's got Dragapult, he's got Nidoking, he's got Star Raptor, Clef, Key, and Rillaboom is definitely going to be a good win condition here. Okay, so right off the bat, we've already figured out something really helpful. Does he have a ground type? Is he going to switch into it? No, he's not. He's probably going to Volt Switch himself here. Um, we'll just go, we'll go Blissey here. I'm not too worried about it. He's probably going to Volt Switch himself, which is fine. There's not a lot we can really do to stop that. He goes Dragapult. That makes me think he's Substitute. Hmm. Yeah, that makes me think he's Substitute. Maybe like Sub Willow, Sub T-Wave, Sub Hex or something like that. I'm gonna go Hard Umbreon because I pretty much have this Pokemon for this reason. Okay, and so if he's like Sub DD or anything like that, when we just click Foul Play here, we're gonna take like no damage from this. Foul Play is gonna break that Sub. So he's Sub with Dragon Darts. And not Life Orb, notably, which is interesting. So how much damage did that do? So let's see here, what's my Umbreon? And then Dragapult. So without a Life Orb, if he's, so he's not max attack, or no, yeah, he's gotta be kind of close. That only did like 26 something percent. So he's probably max speed. Yeah, so that was probably a low roll and he's probably max speed. The question is, do I follow play here or do I wish? I'll, I'll wish. 
as he goes Klefki, which is totally fine. Um, is he's probably gonna set up some spikes now. Which is honestly fine with me. It's kind of a pain, honestly, but it's not the end of the world. I can use his Rotom Heat to defog them away later on. So I think what I'll go for now is I'll just go hard Chandelure. As he sets up Light Screen. So he's going to try and set up with something here. I can go for a pretty strong Fire Blast. So I'll just do that. He's going to Thunder Wave. I'm okay with that for now because we get some good damage off. And what's he going to go into here? Hmm. I can always Heal Bell with um, Umbreon. So he's Light Screen, T-Wave, he's probably Reflect and Spikes as well. We'll Fire Blast again. So he goes into Lycanroc, Midnight. Okay, so we hit another Fire Blast, which is always good. This thing is really difficult for me to deal with defensively. He may Sword Stance here, he may High, ho high Horsepower, he may um, Stone Edge. Let's see how much Rillaboom takes. It should do okay. Why did that just... Okay, Rillaboom... Lycanroc, Midnight, we'll set up Swords Dance. So Stone Edge is going to be doing quite a bit, especially if it's like Life Orb. But I don't think there's anything he can go for that really knocks me out. It does get Fire Fang and Fire Punch. So let's briefly see how much an Adamant Life Orb Fire Punch would do. It still would knock us out, notably. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go hard Rillaboom. So he goes for Substitute. Is he going to try to Sword Stance here, or what? He's behind a Reflect, but Knock Off should be doing a lot of damage to this, so we'll just Knock Off here. He goes for Stone Edge. It does about half. So Stone Edge did 42 something percent. Which means he is not Life Orb. And it means he's also not Adamant. And he's not even max attack potentially. Interesting. So we'll knock off again. He's Intimidate Star Raptor. Interesting. Okay, so unfortunately, um, Rillaboom is a little bit weakened, but given this is Intimidate, actually, let me, so he's got a lot of Substitute Mons. So, let's write this down, Sub, Stone Edge, Drag is not Max Attack, and neither is Lycanroc. I wouldn't be surprised if he invested some in HP to have certain numbers for like Seismic Toss or, you know, to live certain hits. Um, but because of Staraptor being Intimidate, it's not the Reckless Maniac <laughs> type uh, type of bird. So we can actually pretty safely go Toxapex here. I see U-turns. Not too surprising. But I had a whole strategy to like go into Toxapex and Baneful Bunker and then go to Blissey so it takes like 5 million percent from Recoil and then go back to Toxapex. It was kind of a mess. So now Nidoking is in. We can pretty safely go Umbreon or Blissey here. I think I'm gonna go Blissey here because, let me see here. Okay, so yeah, Nidoking can't really set up per se. And um, I think he gets access to Brick Break which isn't even going to be doing half either. And if he wants to set up a substitute, I don't think Nidoking can even get his substitutes up to 400 HP+. plus. So, yeah, we'll just go Blissey here. As he goes Rotom Heat, which is actually fine with me because now I get a Toxic off on something. He can Volt Switch, T-Bolt, or Pain Split, but he doesn't really... Well, I mean, it wouldn't be bad. 
We've already knocked off the heavy duty boots from Staraptor, so I think I'm actually gonna value, I'm gonna value getting up my Stealth Rock here. And then that'll entice him to stay in to defog, we can Toxic here. If he wants to stay in. So, we'll see. Klefki is nice and low. That should be in range of Grassy Glide, which is nice. Hopefully this lands. It does. Lovely. So Rotom Heat is toxic, and we can just get up our Stealth Rock again. I think Klefki dies to a Seismic Toss. This thing does not have a lot of HP. Yeah, so... We'll just Seismic Toss here as he gets up a screen. Nice, so Klefki's dead. And in comes Lycanroc Midnight. Now, notably, we don't really have as much of a switch in this time around because Rillaboom is already a bit weakened. It's Sub and Stone Edge. And it's not Life Warp, so Blissey can actually probably take a hit decently well. That's Adamant, we know he's not Adamant, or not Max Attack. Yeah, I can probably take a hit decently well as Blissey here. So I think I'm actually going to... Do I want to stay in? Does Lycanroc get a Fighting type move? It gets Focus Punch. Is it sub Focus Punch? Also gets Revenge, Reversal, those are kind of scary. Bulk up, it also gets Close Combat. I don't really want to stay in on a Close Combat now, do I? <laughs> this is the scary thing about Lycanroc. Close Combat does a lot. I don't have a great switch in for this, honestly. Hmm. I still really like Blissey in this matchup. I think Toxapex is actually my least useful member here. So I think I'll go Toxapex. As he sets up a substitute. Unfortunately, that's going to allow him to set up because I don't think our Scald will break the substitute through the light screen. Unfortunately, because he's probably a bit HP invested too is going to make dealing with this a little bit of a pain to deal with. So he sets up the Swords Dance. Now, notably, I don't think we'll die from any one hit. Um, Toxapex from, let's see, yeah, Stone Edge, uh, Stomping Tantrum, or Psychic Fangs. Yeah, Psychic Fangs, we're still living um, at plus two. And he's only got a couple more turns of light screen. So, what do we want to do here on the Psychic Fangs? Sub Stone Edge SD and potentially Psychic Fangs, potentially High Horsepower, potentially Close Combat. If it's Stone Edge, we live two of these pretty comfortably. I'm just going to Scald again, actually. Yeah, so he's only at, you know, that much. And... We can recover off pretty well. I think I'm going to Scald again here, as he sets up another Substitute to be expected. We got a crit, which is actually really lucky, because he would have had another chance to attack us. Um, and we would have had to have recovered, so he might have been able to SD there. So, notably, he probably doesn't have High Horsepower or Psychic Fangs. He still has the Light Screen, which is actually quite annoying. Um, but he also only has six stone edges. I don't want to think about PP stalling, but it's just kind of the name of the game. We can Scald here. Do we get a burn? We do not get a burn. Um, unfortunately, we're going to want to switch here. I think my safe switch is actually going into Ditto. I probably should have recovered there, honestly. Let's see how much Lycanroc... Midnight takes from Lycanroc Midnight.
But yeah, this is a tough turn. At plus two, yeah, I'm gonna die to most things that he would go for as ditto. And he's probably going to attack here. So this is not a very good situation. At plus two, I, after Regenerator, I should live one. The thing is, I don't want... He's probably got close combat as his other attack, so he's probably going to Stone Edge here. Hmm. Yeah, he's probably got close combat and Stone Edge, if I had to guess. Does he substitute here? Am I okay with giving up Toxapex? I think I am. It makes Star Raptor a lot more difficult to deal with, though. Hmm. This is a tough turn. could try to like pivot into Umbreon or Blissey and then into Chandelure, but I don't I don't think that's actually worth it. So I'm gonna recover here as he stone edges and knocks me out. Which is a shame, but it's um it's just part of it's just part of the game. <laughs> um unfortunately. So let's see how much Chandelure will actually do to this only my custom sets. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, that'll make dealing with Star Raptor more difficult, but still doable. So, Shadow Ball, there's a chance it knocks it out. With the light screen up, it's doing 33. No, nah, it's not going to knock it out. So we've got to go Rillaboom here. He's plus two, so we can't afford to not Grassy Glide here. He's gonna take 25% from that. So Grassy Glide should be doing quite a bit still. Um, the question is, does he defog here? Does he U-turn? Oh man, I wish I had Tox Effects. <laughs> I wish I had Pex here. Is he going to U-turn, Brave Bird, Defog, Roost, any of the above? Hmm, not sure. So, Star Raptor I don't deal with as well now. I can probably go Chandelure. Is he just going to U-turn here or is he going to Defog or what? really tough to say. Two Brave Birds would probably knock me out though. I think I'm going to go Chandelier here. I'd like to be able to heal up, but um, I don't really have that luxury right now. So he's Roost, U-Turn, which means he's probably only got two attacks. I'm surprised he doesn't have Defog. Oh, wait, no, of course he doesn't have Defog. Rotom, Rotom has Defog. So he's probably going to U-turn here into either Rotom Heat or Nidoking or um, Lycanroc. Um, I think I can pretty safely Fire Blast here. Nothing's going to want to take a Fire Blast after Rocks. So I'll just do that as he U-turns, which is fine. We'll get our HP back. Hopefully I don't get paralyzed. He goes Rotom Heat, it's Heavy Duty Boots, we missed the Fire Blast, lovely. Um, so he is Heavy Duty Boots. But we don't actually fear this thing that much. I mean, it's not like the Fire Blast would have done a ton of damage. But yeah, we don't fear Rotom too much. Uh, it's kind of annoying that his Star Raptor is a bulkier Star Raptor. It's going to make it more difficult to sweep with Rillaboom. So, on the Rotom Heat, what do we go into? I think we go on a potential Volt Switch. 
I think we go Umbreon. Because he may just defog here, and I'd like the chance to um, heal Bell. To heal up, um, or to get rid of the paralysis on my... Um... Actually, he's probably going to Volt Switch here, so I could just protect... Mm, does that really get me a lot? It does, actually, because he's toxic. So he's going to take even more damage here, and Rotom Heat is now getting weakened. What we can do is, we can Heal Bell, and that'll help out with everything, I think. So, yeah, I'm just going to Heal Bell here and get rid of that Paralysis. We're not going to have to worry about that on Shindler for the rest of the game as well. So he goes into Star Raptor, notably. Um, this thing has U-Turn, Roost. It could have Brave Bird or Close Combat. Hmm. Again, I wish I had Tox Effects for this thing, but um, that's unfortunately not an option right now. Um, I think I'll just Protect again here and get a little bit of Leftovers Recovery as he U-turns. So, I think what I'll do is Wish. Because we're not going to take a lot from that U-turn. He goes into Lycanroc Midnight. Now, here is a big moment. I need to know how much he does to my Umbreon with close combat. Because I can almost guarantee that's his second move. So close combat from a Jolly Lycanroc, and I'm fairly confident that he doesn't have any, he's not adamant is going to be doing less than half, and my Foul Play will knock him out. So I'm going to go for Foul Play here. Yeah, so that only did 40%, which is awesome, and we should knock him out here. Yes, so we've gotten rid of Lycanroc, and we are back to almost full from that Wish. He doesn't have a lot to really kill Umbreon now. Nidoking comes in. So Umbreon against Nidoking... It really depends on what kind of Nidoking this is. These can run Substitute. Um, even at minus one, my Foul Play will be knocking out Nidoking. That's right, because it's based on his attack stat. So, I don't think I actually lose to this. I'm just going to Protect here. Actually, no, I don't need to Protect. I should wish. He may have Brick Break. Let me see how much Life Orb Brick Break does. Brick Break to my Umbreon. What if he's max attack? What if he's like adamant instead of, you know, or physically offensive instead of specially offensive? Brick Break is still doing less than half. I just wish again here. As he goes into Star Raptor again. So we can pretty safely go for Foul Play here. As he goes for Heat Wave. Interesting. He goes for Heat Wave. I did not expect that. So he's got U-Turn, Roost, and Heat Wave. Oh, that was probably for Pharaoh Seed, um, which is interesting. What kind of Nidoking is he? Honestly, Umbreon kind of walls the rest of his team now. I want to know what his last move is. We still don't know a lot about Nidoking. Um, it's probably, I bet on it being Scarf, actually. But yeah, Umbreon kind of walls his team right now. So we'll we'll wish up again. And what do I want to go into? I think I want to go into Blissey. Blissey will appreciate the wish. Oh, Whirlwind. So Umbreon is back out. Okay, so U-Turn, Roost, Heat Wave, and Whirlwind. Interesting set. So a defensive bulky Star Raptor that Chandelier completely walls. So I'm actually going to go into... Actually, I'm going to follow play here. And hopefully we get some damage off on Nidoking or Dragapult. But we get more damage off on Rotom Heat, which is awesome, because that thing is going to take more and more damage. 
Now, here's the question. How much does Rillaboom take from a Thunderbolt? Because he is a bulky Rotom Heat, probably. And he doesn't have a fire type attack, actually. So I don't think Thunderbolt is actually going to knock out Rillaboom, notably. And we can go into, even if he's like max special attack, max special attack Thunderbolt doesn't do more than 30%. And I don't want him to pain split here. So I'm actually going to go into Rillaboom. As he just volt switches. So Rotom Heat is very, very low. Um, Rillaboom is also quite low on HP. It's at about 26%. And he doesn't want to go into Nidoking here. He might go into Dragapult, but honestly, Umbreon kind of walls the rest of his team from here on out. So he goes Star Raptor. He can just U-turn or Whirlwind or Heat Wave here, um, which means which means Chandelure is a pretty safe bet. Or Blissey for that matter. He may just Whirlwind, but I'd, I'd bet on him going for U-Turn. So I'm just gonna go Chandelure here because the only thing he can go into is Nidoking, really. Yeah, so Nidoking, um, this should outspeed us if it's Scarf. The thing is, actually, it's a speed tie. Or no, it's not a speed tie. Um, if he is choice scarfed, he will outspeed us. Um, we don't have a, much of a reason to stay in. This would actually be a good time to have Energy Ball. Um, because Blissey kind of walls this. And so does Umbreon. Let me see how much Blissey takes. Yeah, Blissey can handle this thing very well. So I'm going to go Blissey here. Let's see if he switches. He doesn't. And he confirms that he is a special type attacker. He, he only does 18% to Blissey, which means that he is not Life Orb. And in fact, he's probably Choice Scarf. Yeah, that was probably a max roll, which is kind of crazy. Um, but he's probably Scarf. He's got Earth Power. And now we can do some cool stuff because we know that Star Raptor doesn't actually threaten Blissey. So what we can do is get up our Stealth Rock. Oh, I should have Toxic'd. But we got up our Stealth Rock, which is nice. Blissey is near full HP. We can go hard Umbreon here. Because again, this is not a damage boosting Dragapult. Um, Dragon Darts does, he gets a critical hit, and so it does 35%, but Umbreon is very healthy right now. And so we, we can actually just safely go for a foul play here. As he goes into Staraptor, it takes 25% from rocks. Um, we'll take some damage from the foul play as well. He is probably going to just roost here, but we can just keep foul playing to keep him kind of low and every turn we'll still gain a little bit of HP from leftovers anyways. So I'll just keep follow playing. Oh, we speed tie? Oh no, <laughs> he uh, he got the whirlwind. Oh, and of course it's into Rillaboom. That's annoying. Um, Because he's relatively bulky. I don't know his speed tier. I don't really want to risk staying in with Rillaboom though. We could probably knock him out with a knockoff. But again, I don't really want to risk it, I don't think. Because, like I said, he's probably a bulkier set. Because he's a bulky set, um, I should see how much that foul play should have done. How much should foul play have done? Because foul play only did 30%, which means his attack stat must be really low. Yeah, I should have calculated this earlier. Um, let's see here. How is Foul Play doing so little? Hmm. And how much did U-Turn do before? Uh, that's not a good one. Let's see here. Uh, U-Turn did 20% to Umbreon. 
Okay, so he is probably not... He's definitely not adamant. And... He's maybe jolly. So he may have speed investment. So I think we'll still play it safe here and go back into... We'll go back into Blissey. If he wants to roost here, that's fine. Now we get a free Toxic off on something. So... So here's a pretty big play. Um, although we can play it pretty safe. I could potentially Toxic Dragapult here. I could potentially Toxic this if he wants to stay in. He's probably just going to U-turn. But if he goes into Rotom Heat, I can Seismic Toss. Otherwise, I'm going to have to deal with that thing Pain Splitting. So I'm actually going to Seismic Toss here. Because even if he goes Dragapult, I'm not too worried about that. And he goes Rotom Heat, we're going to get the Seismic Toss off. And that's going to take out Rotom Heat. That's Blissey with two kills now. <laughs> and so Dragapult comes in. And at this point, Umbreon Walls... I, even more effectively. So we can go back into Umbreon here as he goes for Substitute, which is to be expected. Again, because of the grassy terrain, Umbreon is getting plenty of HP back. And we'll just follow play here because I don't know what kind of set he is. He's Sub Dragon Dance Dragapult. So it looks like he's going for game here. Even a critical hit on both hits of Dragon Darts won't do more than half. And Umbreon is at full, so we can very safely follow play here. So Dragon Darts goes through that, does 44%. Dragapult is knocked out by Foul Play, and so that's a kill for Umbreon. And Star Raptor and Nidoking really cannot defeat this team. Um, I'm gonna wish up. He's going for a burn with Heat Wave, but. Honestly, that would actually be really nice for me because of Synchronize, I would burn Star Raptor back. Um, I'm just going to go Blissey here, though. Because I can go for Toxic and Seismic Toss and just beat his team. So we get the Toxic off on Star Raptor, and that kind of settles it And we, as we go back into Umbreon. And now we can just click Follow Play. At this point, it's more a matter of who gets the kills. Nidoking comes in, it's going to take 35% from follow play, meaning it probably doesn't have much attack investment. I can very safely go back into Blissey here. Actually, you know what, let's, let's give Blissey the kills. Um, we'll go for Seismic Toss. Earth Power, he's probably going for his special defense drops, but they're not coming, unfortunately. And so yeah, Seismic Toss, Nidoking is dead. And it's just Star Raptor left. So, yeah, we'll just Seismic Toss here, and that's that's going to be the game. Um, because at this point, we stall everything out. So I'll Fire Blast here, and Chandelure gets the final kill. All right, uh, good, good game, Jerry. That was quite scary towards the end. Um, not towards, not towards the end, but when I didn't know what was going on with Star Raptor. I think there was a really big pivotal moment when I realized that Star Raptor could not damage like 99% of my Mons. Um, Chandelure completely walled it. It couldn't damage Umbreon. It couldn't damage Blissey, and that allowed me to set up, you know, some Toxics, get up my rocks, and chip away at things. Umbreon functioned perfectly as a Dragapult counter. Um, Blissey and Umbreon did great to wall Nidoking. Toxapex did a decent job of helping out with Lycanroc, and unfortunately I had to sack it in order to get... I, I forget, I think Chandelure killed it, or was it... I don't remember what actually killed it, but I'll, I'll have to look back. And Ditto allowed me to, right off the bat, determine which Rotom type he had, which was really important in knowing I didn't have to worry about Trick, I didn't have to worry about Overheat, um, I didn't have to worry about Nasty Plot, etc. So I think the team actually functioned really well. I'm shocked Rillaboom didn't end up sweeping because that was what I was had set up the whole team around, is kind of chip away at things and then let Rillaboom set up with a sword stance and sweep. But um, yeah, I mean, Blissey put in a ton of work and I'm happy with how it went. So good game to Jerry and I hope you guys enjoyed this one and are looking forward to next week. But until then, this has been Night Zero and this mission is complete.